scheduled program for a special news report. <laughs> well, it sort of pains me to do this video. Uh, but as you know by now, you know, I don't always paint the rosy picture. You know, I got to give you the truth, the good and the bad, the upsides and downsides, right? I mean, that's the way I roll. You got to keep it real, right? Well, I got something to tell you, a story. So, fasten your seatbelt, let's go on a ride. So anyway, I love to go to the beach, I love to go swimming, and I don't like to go where there's a lot of people hanging out in, in the same place, so. So, I have a place I go to that's adjacent to a resort. And it's sort of secluded, there's not a lot of people around, you know, and there's a beach bar that's actually close up, which is sort of cool because it has showers and everything like that. So, I came to the beach to go swimming, and brought my stuff with me, put it in a little bag, uh, now the ironic thing about this is, uh, is usually I come fully dressed and change and then when I'm finished, put the stuff, my clothes back on because I never know when I want to do a video for you or go into a hotel to uh, do uh, you know, some videotaping or some research or something like that. I don't want to walk into a hotel uh, soaking wet, you know what I mean? So anyway, uh, yesterday I came to the beach. And as I walked by down this, this area here, there were a couple guys hanging out, a couple of Thai kids, you know, teenagers. And so I walked on by, said hello, not a problem, right? And I walked over, walked down the beach just a little closer to the resort, and, uh, and you know, I'm pretty careful. So I put the, the bag under some things so it wouldn't be seen. and. Uh, but I came in a bathing suit, a shirt, and the only thing that was in the bag was my phone, my keys, uh, wallet, and a little bit of money. So anyway, hid the bag and uh, took off my shoes and stuff and went swimming. Well, I'm watching these two guys, and I'm thinking, you know, your intuition's screaming, going, ah, there's something not right about these guys. They just look like they were up to no good. Now, right then, I should have acted on my intuition, right? You know. You know, your unconscious mind knows these things. So anyway, I watched the guy, and he actually went behind a little, uh, the, the building where I put my stuff. He went behind the building. My stuff was sort of in front of the building. So he went behind the little building and came back out a few seconds later. So now I've stopped swimming, and I'm just watching him. Again, my intuition's screaming. In fact, it crossed my mind. I should go talk to the hotel, the resort, and tell them these guys are hanging out because they're not, you know, they're not good for the for business. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, I stared. I was sat in the water watching. Well, the guy, one of the guys, there's two of them, went back behind that building again, and I'm watching. He doesn't come back out. And as I look where my stuff is, I can see his body. He's crawling along the ground up to where my stuff is. Now, you know, I'm closer to 60 than I am 50. So I have to run out through the water, through the waves, in a full sprint, up onto the beach, right? And so I'll show you what happened. So I see the guy get my stuff and come running around here. Now, I'm about 12, 30 feet from him by the time we cross paths here, and I'm yelling at him to stop, stop. And he gives me this wide-ass grin and keeps on running. So we're both running. Now this is where you've seen me come to the beach before where the water buffaloes were. So this should be familiar to you. So anyway, we're running up this path. Now I've already run out of the grass, right? I mean, ran out of this, the, the water, across the sand. Now I'm in bare feet, coming just out of the water, right? So I'm in bare feet running down here. And now I gotta go up this hill. Now, I don't see him because he's so far ahead of me by now, because he's young. He's got a lot of energy. So I go up this hill, and by this time, I'm already starting to pant. Okay? So I'm running, and I'm running. I don't know which way he went. I'm running, and I'm running up here. And I get to this point where the road is. So the cop. 
So I get to this road and I look, okay, see which way he went. So I see some staff members down here. So I come running down here and the staff members are standing outside this little building. It looks like they're maids or something. So I ask them, which way did he go, which way did he go? And at first they don't say anything. So I keep going, going down this road. I turn back to them and go, which way, which way did he go? And they pointed down here and then pointed up the hill. Now I'm already, I'm really panting by this point, you know? I'm running now on the cement with my bare feet. And I'm running and I'm running. And I get all the way down here. And so, now the ironic thing about this is, I just did a video that morning, yesterday morning for the members about not carrying your passport because it can get lost or stolen or damaged. But in the bag is my wallet with, with ATM cards, my driver's license, the keys to the motorbike, the keys to my apartment, and some money. Now, I turn and they are pointing up this hill. Now there's some bungalows up here. Now if I point this camera straight, you see the steepness of this hill. By this time I'm coughing up a lung. I'm dying. And now I start, I see him going up the hill. I see him climbing, but he's not climbing up the cement. He's climbing up the embankment here. Now, I'll try and show you. This is straight up. This is straight up, and I see him up there. Now, he had a red shirt on, so he took the red shirt off, so I wouldn't be able to see him. But I can still see him going through the underbrush. And now I'm screaming at him, and I'm screaming at him in Thai, that, hey, I'll give you the money. Give me back the cards. And I'm yelling, help, help. You know, I'm screaming, give me back the money. I mean, give me, the, give me back the bag. I'll give you the money. Don't worry about the money. I'll give you the money. So now... And bare feet. Now this is all underbrush and trash and stuff that's been tossed down the hill here. I'm going up this thing, climbing up, bare feet. Got cuts on my hands today, cuts on my feet. And by the time I get up here, I don't see the guy anymore. So let me show you from up there. So this is where I lost the guy, up in here. Now I'm up under these bungalows now, and I come up here, and I'm screaming, I'll give you the money, I'll give you the money, you know, don't worry about it, I'll give you the money, give me back the cards, give me back the bag. Well, I've lost them now, I don't see them anymore. But down here, on this driveway, I see a Thai worker, or maybe he's a Cambodian, working for the hotel, and he's sweeping down here. So I'm yelling to him, telling him that a thief stole my stuff. And he comes up, and a few minutes later he walks away. And I keep yelling to the guy, I'll give you the money, I'll give you the money. You know, help. And I'm, I'm yelling pretty loud now, right? Well, this is this mountainside, really. You can't really go many places up here. You're sort of stuck. You gotta come back down, right? So anyway, this guy now comes back a couple minutes later, and he's waving at me to follow him. And so I'm thinking, oh, they caught the guy or something. So we come back down here, and I go down the hill with him. And I keep going, no, the guy's up the hill. The guy's up the hill. And he's waving at me to follow him. So I start heading back down this driveway. And I'm thinking, you know, my stuff is gone. This isn't good. So we go down this steep driveway. And by the time I get to the bottom, now you can see that this is where the office is. And the guy's telling me to follow him to the office. But when we get to the road, you know, there's traffic here. I'm trying to shade the camera here from the sun. There's traffic. So I look both ways to cross the road, and I look back up the road to where I, where I came from, and at that little house where the, the help was, they're waving at me to come. And they're frantically waving at me, both ladies. So I walk back up here to the 
the little uh, supply room or whatever that is where the, the workers are waving for me to come to. And when I get up here, they pick up their arm and they're holding my bag. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. got to be kidding me. And so I take the bag, I open it up, and guess what? Nothing's there. No. <laughs> Just kidding. Everything was there. Everything was still in the back. And I said, you know, like, what's the deal? And they said something like, because I was yelling so much, this guy came back down. He figured he was going to get caught. Came back down with the bag, and he dropped it over this fence to them. So... So that was a happy ending to my sad story. I got my bag back, which I'm really grateful for. You know, you gotta count your blessings. So I wanna let you know that, you know, some people, I always say about how you know generous and kind and everything Thai people are, but there's aberrations everywhere. And so you need to be careful. There's an expression that says, in God we trust and tie up your horses. And I try to adhere to that. Another thing I try to adhere to is paying attention to my intuition. I knew, looking at these guys, that they were no, up to no good. And at that point, I should have acted on my intuition. I shouldn't let my logical mind override it and go, no, nah, it's okay. It wasn't okay. I knew this was going to happen. I could see it. I could feel it. And so I didn't act on it. And 90% of the time in my life, I act on it. Just because of this, I, I always come back and say, I knew. I knew. And I didn't know. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to pay attention. Again, remember the watch and now. Stay in the moment. Stay outside yourself. Don't go in and think. Me going in and think is what stopped this process from being eliminated or cut off before it ever happened. Kill the monster while it's a baby. You know, I should have, as soon as I said something's not right, these people don't look right, I should have gone up, got my stuff, and moved it closer to the resort or something. Now, the interesting thing about this is... In seven years, I haven't had any problem except for my wacko uh, neighbor, who was a foreigner. Um, other than that, I haven't had any problems here. And w I was gone for a couple days within the last week from my apartment. When I came back, we had a community hot water pot, pump pot, where it brews hot water. And in the morning, everybody could go out and get you know hot water for coffee or soups or whatever. So when I came back after a couple days, the water pot was gone. I asked the guy who manages the place, he says, oh, I think somebody took it. So then I go to clean the apartment and the mop out back of my door is missing. So those two things got stolen. Then this person that I know needed some help. And um, I didn't know the person really well, but uh, I'd known them a little bit of past history. So what I did was I offered them, you'll come down, I'll pay for your transportation to come down. And so what do you cup? And so I pay, I'll pay for the transportation, come down, and I'll help you out. You can work for me. I'll pay you X amount of bot per month. You can clean. You can you know, hold the camera while I'm shooting, whatever. I want to help you out. Because they said, oh, you know, I don't have a job anymore. I don't have anybody in my life, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, I'll help you out. And I didn't know that person that well, but I wanted to help. So I told them, you know, are you agreeable? They said yes. So I transferred the money for the transportation to come down. And when I did that, as soon as I did it, actually before I did it, I'm thinking, nah, this just doesn't feel right. There's something about this, the situation is not right. But again, I said, you know, I've already sort of committed to doing this. I'm going to go ahead and follow through with it. So I transferred the money. And afterwards, I'm thinking, you know, this isn't so good. After a couple of weeks, if it doesn't work out, I don't feel right, this is going to all end it. And just give them the money for the month and call it a, call it a month. And, um, but anyway, gave the money, told them, okay, you need to get the, the, the transportation from uh, Chiang Mai to Bangkok, Bangkok to try and come over on the ferry. The money's been transferred. And they said they're on their way. <laughs> 24 hours later, I hadn't even heard from this person. I sent a message, you know, where are you? I got to know to go to the ferry pick you up. Never heard from him. Two days and never heard from him. So I sent a message, uh, actually a SM message message to them saying, you know, that I guess you've taken my money, you know, be careful. Bad things happen to bad people. And uh, call, it, call it a 
a learning experience again. There's no losing experience. There's only learning experiences. Now, the weird thing about this is this has all happened in a matter of uh, a week or so. And I haven't had any, any problems for seven years. Now, seven years ago, I was living in Patea, and I had an experience there. I want to tell you about it just so you know what the possibilities are. Um, my wife had an emergency appendectomy, and uh, I stayed at the hospital. You can actually stay at the hospital with people that you know um, overnight. And uh, she was getting released that day. I wanted to go get the, um, our truck to go pick her up. But I've been commuting you know, back and forth with my motorbike. And so I had my computer with me and all some stuff we wanted to take back to the, to the, to the condo. And uh, I was on the motorbike and I had this backpack with the computer and all sorts of heavy stuff in it, which I didn't want on my back. And all the, most of the motorbikes are here have baskets on the front. So I stuck it in the basket and I uh, headed back to the condo. Now, I was on this back road, and uh, it's a two-lane road, and it's sort of curvy. So I was cruising along, probably about 60K, um, and a bike comes up alongside me to pass me as normal, just like normal. And uh, all of a sudden, the car is coming the opposite way. So we both move over to let the par car pass. Well, when they moved over, they just reached their hand out and snagged the, the, the backpack out of the basket and took off. Now this guy accelerated really quick. I got up to about 110, 120 on the little motorbike and figured I'm going to kill myself going after this thing. I'll just let it go. Now, the good part of that story was is that um, I reported to police and about two and a half, three weeks later, they called me and said, we think we have your computer. And this was a band of, uh, of thieves um, that sold cars, motorbikes, computers, cell phones, everything. And they caught them and brought me back uh, to identify the computer. It was on the news and everything like that. But that's the last time I ever had a problem here. And this stuff is happening right within a week, all this stuff. And so... It reminds me of a story. Now, I tell you this stuff not to worry you, but again, in God we trust and tie up our horses. Be careful, you know, and listen to your intuition. That's the main message here. Listen to your intuition. But because all this stuff's happening within this short amount of time, this week, it reminds me of a story where uh, uh, King Solomon, he uh, asked one of his ministers, he says, look, I have a, a, uh, a mission for you. I want you to give me a ring, find me a ring that uh, when I'm over jubilant, it'll remind me of my, uh, my core values. And when I'm down, it'll pick me up. I want an inscription on this ring, a gold ring. So the minister went out and he said, I want it by Sukkot, uh, which is coming up in six months. So the minister went all over, couldn't find anything like this in existence. So, on the night before Sukkot, he was going through one of the poorest parts of the, the village, and uh, he saw this goldsmith. He told him what his plight was, and so the goldsmith gave him a ring. And inscribed on the inside of the ring was, this too shall pass. So, no matter what's happening in your life, you know, we go through these ebbs and flows just like the tides out here. You know, I'm going through this period, and you just need to identify it, know what's happening, and know that it'll pass. And be careful until that time ends. And this happens in all sorts of situations. It could be a, a, a time when you're not receiving money, when you're not, uh, a lot of things happen. You know, you, you go through these periods of prosperity and then not. And so when you're going through a bad time, just know it's not going to last forever. It's going to end. And so this is what I wanted to share with you that it's not all rosy, it's not all good stuff, but we take the good with the bad. And it reminds me now to be more careful. More careful when I'm driving the motorbike, locking up the motorbike, uh, leaving my apartment, all this stuff. I need to be careful. You know, I'm a real trusting person. And uh, it's okay to be trusting and be careful at the same time. So, that's my story. I wanted to share it with everybody uh, that's thinking about coming over or even traveling over here um, on vacation. Be careful. Pay attention to your intuition. Your intu intuition usually will scream at you. Don't ignore it. Pay attention to it. So I hope that's been helpful. And remember, when it comes to tying up your horses, <laughs> there's always an option.